I don't know what to say, really. Three minutes to the biggest battle of our professional lives all comes down to today. Now either we heal as a team or we're going to crumble. Inch by inch, play by play. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys. As well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is Thirsty Thursday, and my God, one week from today, I'll be waking up in Detroit with my buddy Game Time Brian, Chef David Wiley, as well as primetime Phil. And I don't know about you, but I am looking forward to the draft because it's all we got. It's all we got. Well, no, I can't say it's not all we got because we got always lots and lots of drama that goes on with the Dallas Cowboys. It's crazy because you could go, mm, I think literally we could take all of the drama that 31 teams have combined. And it still does not equal the drama of the Dallas Cowboys. It is crazy. Now, you know, yesterday I was uh, on Dan Salio's show. We simulcast it here on my channel. Um, my apologies. I didn't realize that I messed up because I was using his stream yard. Uh, in. I basically had two inputs at the same time. And it ended up being that you got an echo. So sorry about the sound quality and everything else. Um, but it was an interesting discussion that we were having about the Cowboys and Eagles. And he brought up quite a few things with that. One of the things was Jimmy Johnson was the CEO of the Dallas Cowboys as far as everything that happened on the field. Jerry Jones took care of the sinking ship that was the money situation. And they were in such bad shape that they were hemorrhaging $2 million a month. Jerry went through, I mean, yeah, Jerry Jones went through, he fired everybody. He had to count how many pairs of socks there were. He had to scrimp and save every cent that they could to make it. And they had this whole mentality of, you know, we are a family that is literally running this business because we don't have money to pay other people. The coaches were some of the cheapest paid coaches in the NFL because Jerry wanted to keep them hungry. Hmm. And didn't want people to get comfortable. Here's the thing that's kind of interesting is, and, and maybe this is, Jerry Jones is crazy and crazy like a fox. One thing you have to say about Dak Prescott is every time Dak Prescott has been put out there where it's, this is the last year of your contract, Dak Prescott has performed. People keep betting against Dak Prescott, and I've got the chips. Maybe all in meant, Dak Prescott, you're all in. You're betting the farm. You are betting the farm on that contract. You perform, you're getting it. Maybe, I don't know. That's just just an idea. We've had so many different things thrown, so much different shit thrown on the walls here. You know, we're just trying to figure out what's going to stick. But Jerry keeps... Going back to nostalgia, that's why he hires guys that were former players or former coaches. That's why we kept the same basic offense with Jason Garrett for all those years. He keeps opining for the past and things that we used to do. Unfortunately, you have to evolve. You have to change with the times. Back in when we were winning the Super Bowls, there was no salary cap. And so the Cowboys have not really learned how to maneuver in the salary cap era. 
Stephen Jones going through and talking about, you know, you you got to save that money for Dak Prescott and, you know, the guys. you got to pay them. But here's where it's kind of crazy is the problem is, is the mom and pop shop is not going to cut it when you start thinking about the intricacies of the salary cap. And the problem is, is they don't know how to work the system. They know how to draft. They know how to develop players. But they don't know how to do this cap. Now, I want you to understand, Dak Prescott signed a $160 million contract. $160 $160 million contract, okay? Four years, averages $40 million a year. That's the contract that they signed together. So explain to me, explain to me how we have Jalen Hurts, who signs a $255 million contract that averages $11 million more a year last year, and his cap number last year was $6.1 million. Explain to me how the second year of his deal is thirteen point five. Explain to me how next year's deal cap hit is $21 million. I want you to understand something here. I want you to understand something here. Cowboys have dead money next year on Dak Prescott's $160 million deal. That will be more than Jalen Hurts' cap number. If the Cowboys and Stephen Jones know how to work the system, how is it that Jalen Hurts' contract is nowhere near $55 million cap hit that we have? This year. And understand the Eagles. This this is where I want you to understand when you say Dak is greedy. If Jalen Hurts has a $255 million contract, that's $95 million more. And not until 2029 does that contract get higher than what the Cowboys are playing this year. Somebody is playing chess and somebody else is playing checkers. There's no way in the world that Jalen Hurts should be getting $11 million more per year and not in any of those years, not in any of those years, is it a $50 million hit. Let's do Joe Burrow. Because I want you to understand, the problems Cowboys have, nobody else has. So Joe Burrow signed a $275 million contract. $115 million more than Dak Prescott. Last year's cap hit was 19. This year's cap hit, 29. 25, 46. Keep in mind, we got $40 million in dead money next year that we have to account for on Dak Prescott's. 26 is 48, and in 27 it's 52. Not until 2029 is a single year of Joe Burrow's contract worse than what Dak says right now. Now, you can blame Dak Prescott and say, you know, the Cowboys – You know, Dak Prescott, he's taking all the money. If a guy is getting $115 million more on his contract than our current quarterback, and his cap numbers are half this year than what ours is at the end of his, then there's a problem with the way that they're writing these contracts. Now, I don't mean to throw anybody under the bus, okay? Okay. Adam Persefica, for example, because here's what we do. You know, there's the old saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know. 
okay? Dan Rupert, shout out to Dan Rupert on Twitter. I remember having this conversation some weeks ago with um, Game Time Brian. You know, I, I know we're just guys that are in our mama's basement and, and things, and, you know, we don't get traction. We're, we're not, uh, even though social media by name is media, um, we don't get, you know, people come and say, you're not media. But if you're social media, aren't you? Be, be that as it may. We talked about this before about Adam Persefica. And again, I'm not trying to throw him under the bus. But here's the thing about this is, Adam, who worked for Marketplace Grill in their corporate office, okay, their corporate office, and was a trainer for servers at his college, was a volunteer equipment manager, immediately in August 2002, gets hired after being a trainer and server for Marketplace Grill, recruited to opening team as a corporate trainer, repeat top rankings and sales among all servers responsible for, you know, training staff and all, okay? He worked that job for two years out of college. He gets hired by the Cowboys as a director of salary cap per year contracts. Now, we've all exaggerated on our resumes to get a job or get a job and you do on the job training okay and I am sure Adam has learned a lot of things working with the Cowboys organization in the course of his 22 years of being there because he is then also player personnel negotiates players contract and manages the salary cap now Currently, um, for one year, since 22, Senior Director of Salary Cap and Players Contract, which senior. Now, I understand you have, you know, uh, directors and then you have VPs and, of course, you have CEOs. I don't think there's any VPs that are there. So Senior Director is he's one of the higher ups. It means he's got other people underneath of him that are working and answering to Stephen Jones. Now, again, he's been doing this job for 22 years, and you will learn a lot on the job. But here's the question here. Here's the question. If the salary cap came in in 1995, Stephen Jones is the guy who is the money guy, was a chemical engineer in college. What experience do the Cowboys have in teaching somebody the intricacies of being a capologist? Who is Adam learning from? Because when you hear Stephen Jones say, well, we got, you know, they, they said last year, oh, well, that's Micah's money and still haven't paid Micah. When you hear Jerry, uh, Stephen Jones say, well, you know, you got to save money for Dak and CD, and you're not paying Dak and CD. And when you're sitting here and you're literally looking at Jalen Hurts' contract where he has been paid and they've got him manageable until 2029 with a cap number of $13 million. Literally, his cap number is a third of the dead money on Dak Prescott's. Clearly, you're failing in understanding how to use the cap. I get it. Jerry has the mentality of, we built all this stuff without anybody else. But just hire somebody to work with Adam. If you love Adam and he's the guy and all that, I get it. No problem. Have somebody there who can be under Adam that can say, hey, listen, here might be a better way that we could save some money on the cap. Because quite frankly, could you imagine if A, the Cowboys did actually want to get into free agency, if they ended up getting Dak Prescott's deal that was actually 
say twenty million dollars a year? Because they could do it. They could do it right now. They could do it. See, Stephen Jones is trying to sell you that we're going to spend more money paying Dak and not have money for others. That's what he's trying to make the impression of. We have to save the money for Dak Prescott. Well, here's the thing. At the moment, we have $100 million in cap space for next year. If you do DACs and CDs, you'll create, you'll, you'll use some of that money for next year. You'll use some of it. You won't use all of it. You'll use some of it. But you'll create more money for this year. And since they don't spend it, that money can be rolled over into next year. And either Stephen Jones does not have a clue how it works or he's bullshitting you. And neither of those things are good. That's why they need to go ahead and say, yeah, we're a mom and pop shop. You know, we've made all kinds of money. We're the most valuable franchise in football. But maybe we need a little bit extra help. You know, let, let's, let's take a couple hundred thousand dollars and pay a guy to be a capologist. It's not going to hurt the bottom line. And it may actually save a whole lot of money. Because from where I sit, when they do stupid deals like they did with Zeke Elliott, when they do stupid deals like they did with Michael Gallup, you have to question and say, as they only spend $11 million in the offseason and say, we don't have money to spend because we're saving that money to pay Dak, where no other quarterback, uh, I mean, let's see if I can find it real quick. I can find the breakdown. Because here's the thing. Deshaun Watson is the worst because he has a fully guaranteed contract. They can't play it, uh, change it. It's $63 million cap hit the next three years, and that's solid. Dak is next at $55 million. Russell Wilson is 53. That's, you know, basically mostly dead money. Matthew Stafford is at 49. Kyler Murray is at 49. Um, that's the top five right now. That's the top five. When you start going through and you look at these and say, the Cowboys, it would suit them to get somebody that knows what they're doing. That's all I'm saying. If you do that one thing, it'll release all that pressure and saying uh, where it's we can't sign anybody. It will actually be where you can do some things if you want to. And that's the bottom line with all this. And um, I'm going to keep on pounding the table and reminding people that as we blame Dak Prescott and CD and everybody else, other teams are making these moves where they're not hurting them because they understand if you wait until the end of the contract to do these, it's going to kill your salary cap. All right, good people. I hope you all are having a great day. I've got to get up the road and get to work because i got bills to pay. And this is the uh, last day Mike will be working with me. I've enjoyed having him here. And help me get this job done, but he's got to get back to other things. And so, I'm appreciative for what I have. And as always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Peace out. They run. They laugh. I see the glow shining in their eyes.